I'm Jay Postones, I play drums for Tesseract, and I'm gonna help you add a little bit more flavor to your chop sauce. If you were through the previous lesson that I made, then you'll have sat with a seven stroke ostinato, which was right, left, left, right, left, right, left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice and easy. What we're gonna do is use that same count and more or less that same sticking to put together this cool choppy fill, this linear fill. So repeat after me. Right, left, kick, right, left, kick, kick. That's where we want to get that to. So right, left, kick, right, left, kick, kick. And it doesn't have to be the exact voicing I just did. You can play it on one tom. You can play it. You can play it exactly wherever you want it. That, my friends, was up at 150 beats per minute, which was just about doable for me. Maybe if I had another coffee, I could go up to 160. But there's no particular goal here. You've just got to get the pattern clean. Once it's clean, then you can work on speed. Now we're going to mess with things. I'm going to displace that pattern by 1 16th note. What that means is that instead of starting on the right hand, I'm going to start on the final kick. So where we got those two kicks at the end, I'm going to start the pattern on that second kick. So instead of it being the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, starting on the right, it's gonna be kick, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the exact same pattern, but it starts on that second kick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kick right, left, kick right, left, right, kick right, left, kick right, left, right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll know you've got that pattern down when that second kick really feels like it's connecting with the one of that metronome. If it doesn't feel like it's doing that, slow it down a little bit until you can identify that moment. Everything else in between, it should be a nice comfortable flow. It should never feel awkward. It shouldn't feel like you're counting a seven. It should just feel natural, just like a natural rhythm. You know where everything's going. So practice that pattern up to that point, get the kicks landing on the one. Then you can focus on increasing the tempo. We've just practiced two ways of starting that pattern. There's another five ways that you could start that seven stroke pattern, if that makes sense. We've practiced two of the seven. We've started on two of the seven. You could start at any other point, and that's the great thing about displacement. It gives you this other feel out of a pattern you already know. Yes, it takes a little bit of learning, but really you're just learning where that click lands in relation to what you're playing, which is a little easier than learning a whole new pattern from scratch. So out of the current patterns that you already know, the current things that you overuse and maybe you feel a bit tired of, try displacing them. Start them on a different 16th note. Start them on one 16th note back, two 16th notes back, three 16th notes back and see what happens to the pattern. Now we're gonna use that pattern as a drum fill. 
and what I like to do is play around with different voicings and potentially I'm going to change the ending ever so slightly to roll out of the fill back into a groove that I'm playing. You can keep it linear all the way through, you could just end wherever the fill ends. Sometimes I like to do that, other times I like to roll through the fill. I'll show you both versions. Those are the two versions, the one starting with the right hand and the one starting with the kick. If you keep it linear all the way through, that's how they play. What you'll notice about those fills is that the ending of them can feel a little awkward because we're not completing a full grouping of seven. We're ending that, we have to chop it at some point for it to fit into that 4-4 four, four loop. So starting with the right hand version, it ends with a right hand again. which would mean the first beat of the next bar, I'm gonna to have to crash with my left. Like that. And I'm not left dominant, so that feels a little bit funky to me. So what I might do is either end the fill differently or Maybe I'll try a different combination. So let's start with the kick and see how that makes us finish it. Doing that means I'm gonna to have to end with a heel toe double kick. And that second heel toe double kick is going to be the first beat of the next bar. something like that. So both of those present options. Again, there are five other ways that we could play that. And I invite you to explore those other five. Just take that pattern and start it on any of the others. The other way that I can include this as a fill is by changing the ending of it into something completely different. It's a small change, but there's definitely a difference between those two things, either the linear pattern all the way through or ending it with a pattern that enables you to make it a little bit more comfortable to then go into the next bar of groove. And the option is completely yours. You may have a couple of patterns that work nicely. I tend to put maybe a couple of double strokes in there. I'll end with a different heel toe placement, but there are patterns that I can place into that grouping of seven that enable me to flow out of it a little easier than just playing it linear all the way through. But it's probably more impressive to play the linear pattern all the way through. If you practice that, it's gonna sound blinding. If you practice that and get it tight. For more lessons like this, please make sure you sign up to my mailing list. And if you've got five seconds to do that, make it 10 seconds and fill out the little form that I've put up, which tells me what you want to improve about your playing. If you do that, I will personally send you some drum lessons that I think will help you the most. If you found this lesson fun and useful, please hit that subscribe button to be among the first people to know when a new lesson goes live.